from Washington, this is VOA News. Israel says it will release an undetermined number of Palestinian prisoners. Car bombings kill at least 30 in Baghdad. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. Israel has agreed to release a limited number of Palestinian prisoners a day after the two governments agreed to head back to negotiations in hopes of settling long-standing differences. Israeli officials did not give specific details about the number of prisoners or their identities. Late Friday, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry announced the plans for resumed negotiations. This is a significant and welcome step forward. The agreement is still in the process of being formalized. Not everyone is immediately optimistic, including Danny Dayan, the foreign policy officer for the settler movement. Any uh, solution that is devised in forcibly expelling, uh, um, removing persons from their home, whole families, whole communities, as I said, whether Palestinians or Israelis, is completely wrong, is completely erroneous. From a moral point of view and from a political point of view, it will not happen. We are here to stay. Iraqi authorities say a wave of car bombings has hit predominantly Shiite areas of the capital, Baghdad, killing at least 32 people and wounding many more. There is no immediate claim of responsibility for the bombings. An Italian court has accepted guilty pleas from five people involved in the wreck of the Costa Concordia, the cruise ship that ran aground on the Italian coast 18 months ago. Four crew members and an employee of the cruise company which operated the vessel were sentenced Saturday to prison terms ranging from 18 to 34 months. It's not certain if anyone will serve time. 32 people were killed in the incident. In Mali, at least five people reportedly have been abducted by gunmen. Officials in northern Mali say that number includes four election officials. A Malian official says the gunmen are suspected to be members of the MNLA, ethnic Tuareg separatist group, which signed a ceasefire with the government last month. More details on these stories at voanews.com. Violence broke out in a Paris suburb during a Friday night protest of France's ban on Muslim face veils. Some 250 people gathered outside the police station in the town of Trap after a man was arrested Thursday for assaulting a police officer during a police check of his veiled wife. Egypt says it will re-examine its diplomatic relations with Syria, which became strained under the government of President Mohamed Morsi, who was ousted earlier this month. Egypt's new foreign minister said today the interim government will not wage what he called a holy war against Syria, but that Egypt supports change there and stressed the re-examination does not mean closer ties will result. Former White House correspondent Helen Thomas has died at the age of 92. Thomas covered American presidents for nearly 50 years and was a pioneer for women in journalism at a time when men dominated the profession, covering every U.S. commander-in-chief since President John F. Kennedy. VOA's Julie Tabo spoke with Thomas a few years ago and has a report. Helen Thomas was born in Winchester, Kentucky in 1920. She graduated from Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan in 1942 with a degree in journalism and joined the United Press International News Agency the following year. She stayed with UPI for 57 years. In 1961, during President Kennedy's administration, Thomas became the first woman to cover the White House. Well, it was wonderful, really, because there was great hope with the Kennedy administration. Young people were taking over and uh, they had great goals. Thomas was also a best-selling author of five books, including her last, Listen Up, Mr. President, Everything You Always Wanted Your President to Know and Do. Julie Tabo, VOA News, Washington. Friends and colleagues say Thomas passed away at her home in Washington Saturday morning. 
Thousands of people in the United States have joined nationwide rallies to demand federal action in support of civil rights. One week after a Florida jury acquitted a Hispanic neighborhood watchman in the shooting death of Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager. George Zimmerman was found not guilty of second-degree murder and manslaughter in the February 2012 incident in which he fatally shot Martin in the chest during an altercation. The jury accepted Zimmerman's claim that he was acting in self-defense. The verdict angered many Americans who believe Martin's killing was racially motivated. Race was not discussed in court during the trial. American civil rights leader Reverend Al Sharpton's National Action Network organized Saturday's vigils in honor of Martin. For the latest, visit us at voanews.com. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News, reporting from Washington.